Hello and welcome to Steve's Soft Drink Shack. We're still getting started on our journey through soft drink history, and today I thought we'd take a look at another pre-cola classic. It's ginger ale. The first ginger ale was produced in Ireland at some point in the 1850s. I can't say for sure whether it was made by Grattan and Company or Dias and Cantrell. Both companies, however, involved one Thomas Joseph Cantrell, an apothecary and surgeon. His ginger ale formula would set the standard for what are now known as golden ginger ales. Over time, Dias and Cantrell would lose the Dias and gain a Cochrane to form Cantrell and Cochrane, or C and C. By the turn of the century, Cantrell and Cochrane ginger ale was a major hit in America and had become one of Ireland's biggest exports. The company's success would wane over the next century and a quarter. A long string of corporate mergers and acquisitions would lead to CNC selling its beverage business to Britvic in 2007. Britvic is apparently still selling CNC ginger ale under the club label. At some point after the American Civil War, American pharmacist James Verner would create Verner's ginger ale. According to company folklore, Verner developed the recipe before enlisting in the war. Upon his return, he would find an oak cask of the drink, now aged four years, which he declared to be deliciously different. Statements by James Verner Jr. and former company president James Verner Davis claimed that the recipe was developed after the war. The story gets muddier. According to Verner's own marketing, Verner's ginger ale was first served in 1866. However, Verner's own 1911 trademark application claims that they instead started business in 1880. Either way, Verner's is a golden ginger ale, which is supposedly still aged four years in oak casks. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any Verner's in time to make this video. Not only is my local Pepsi supplier out of stock, they're unable to order any more. Perhaps viewers in Michigan will have better luck finding some. In 1904, Canadian pharmacist John J. McLaughlin would create a new kind of ginger ale, one that was less sweet and had a gentler flavor. Inspired by dry wines, he first called his product Pale Dry Ginger Ale. Some three years later, McLaughlin patented what he then called Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Canada Dry Limited began to produce the drink en masse in its Toronto bottling plant. Later that year, Canada Dry was accepted by appointment to the royal household of the Governor General of Canada. The company added a crown and shield to its logo in order to commemorate. It would quickly become an international hit too. During America's prohibition era of rot gut booze, Canada Dry became a very popular mixer. So. Is ginger ale Irish, American, or Canadian? I guess it depends on which kind of ginger ale you like best. Considering today's major brands, that is Canada Dry and Schweppes, are both producing pale ginger ales, I want to give the win to Canada. There's some irony here though. As far as I can tell, Seagram's ginger ale isn't available in Canada and never has been. This is a major brand in the US. That's despite the fact that the Seagram company is Canadian, or at least was until they went defunct in year 2000. Seagram's ginger ale still exists in the US thanks to the Coca-Cola company. And you can see that the Canada Dry has a uh, pale yellow color to it. You can see why they call it pale rather than golden. And it has next to no smell, maybe a slightly gingery smell to it. What I taste immediately is sweetness, followed by some ginger, and there's a little bit of like a tartness to it, a little bit of a sourness to it. It's not intense, but it's just enough to make it um, a bit more interesting of a flavor. I've always been a big fan of Canada Dry. I'm a Canadian. This was always in my household growing up. Um, I think it's pretty good. I think it's also good mixed with like fruit juice. We used to mix it half and half with orange juice and it's just delicious, like a homemade orangina kind of thing. Really, really good. They also sell some versions with 
other flavors in it. They do have a cranberry one, which I think is delicious. Canada Dry does that. Um, it's pretty good. You'll notice here I got two different logo designs. This can is a slightly older can. This bottle has the new logo design. As far as I can tell, um, this logo design isn't uh, launched in the US yet. It's probably coming your way. Interesting factoid, when I was looking up Schweppes ginger ale, I uh, read right on the bottle, produced under license from Canada Dry Mots. And uh, it's the same deal with Verner's, and it's the same deal with Sussex Gold here in Canada. So if you want to buy some ginger ale, you're more or less giving money to Canada Dry, no matter what you do. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a good one.